Hey guys, it's Miss Hannah. I am helping Miss Jones out with your art. So uh, some of the things that we're going to be doing in class are all of the art is optional. But I think sometimes you might think, well, I'm not going to do that art because I don't have the right supplies. Um, and I just want to show you um, that it can be pretty easy even if you don't have a lot of art supplies. It can be pretty easy, even if you don't have a lot of art supplies, to do some of the stuff we're going to do. So, for instance, um, if you don't have like a lot of colors uh, and you wanted to do the mosaic, but you have like pencils um, or scissors, just a pair of scissors, hopefully glue or tape, uh, you can still do it. So, I rated our recycle. This is just a piece of paper. I think it was probably a card holder thing I got from the store. I got that other recycle. And I just have just scrap pieces of paper here too. Like I think we did a project for that and then we just haven't used it since. I also have things like cardboard boxes, stuff like that. And um, if you have parents that have magazines and they don't mind that you cut them up, magazines is really a, a good one to have. However, you have to ask about cutting up your parents' magazines or newspapers before you do it. Um, but I have just like, you know, magazine inserts and stuff from the mail, I think. And then I have uh, newspapers. And newspapers tend to have like little bits with pretty pictures. And so you could use that um, and cut out parts for that as well. And um, mailers, like if you have gotten mailers from Amazon or something or from the mail and you're done using the envelopes, you can use this um, well, like right here, especially. Let's see if I can get it in there. This little part right here is real flat. So use that. So, um, with mosaics, a lot of the time what you want to do first is you want to decide, okay, well, what am I going to make this mosaic of? Is it going to be a picture of a flower, a picture of a car, um, a picture of various things? So, mosaics, as you know from your reading, when you do your reading, were often made um, out of little intricate pieces of tile, uh, glass, shells, and things like that. Um, sometimes they colored them, sometimes they were already colored, and you'll learn all about that kind of stuff. But really it's just little pieces of something that makes a bigger picture. They would have been very well planned out. Um, but some of it too would have been just them figuring out where pieces fit and where pieces didn't fit, but they would always have a picture in their mind. So it might help you if you just have a plain piece of paper and you decide what you wanna do. For instance, if you decide you are going to do like a rainbow, you know you're going to need the colors Roy G. Biv, red, uh, blue, green, yellow, those kinds of colors, um, violet. If you're going to do like a fire, um, let's say like you're going to do s'mores and a fire, you would want to first like get a piece of paper and then just kind of plan out where things are going to be. And I would do that with a pencil so I can erase the lines. Let's see if I have a pencil. Yeah, pencil so I can erase the lines. So let's say um, I'm going to do a fire, okay? I'm going to be like a campfire. So if I'm going to do a campfire, I'm going to have a log, which will be like brown, right? So you see that? That's an outline of a log. I know it's very light because I'm, I'm going to go over it with my mosaic stuff. So and then I would just kind of do what sort of a fire would look like. And for me, that's usually lines that are real curvy, different colors. Got to think of what colors fires have, like orange or red or yellow. Sometimes if it's really hot, blue. Um, and so you can see them, right? I made these little curvy lines. I'm gonna probably cover those curvy lines up with stuff I cut out. So this is just an idea for me. What is it gonna look like? Um, if I had um, 
maybe it's a s'mores fire, maybe I have a stick and a marshmallow on there. It can be anything that you like to do. So if you have no scrap paper, like I was just showing you, that still doesn't mean you can't do a mosaic. So I know a lot of you probably have highlighters, markers, crayons, you can have a white piece of paper, even like old mail, like the back of something that doesn't have a lot of writing on it would work just fine. So this is a highlighter. No, this one is a highlighter. Uh, and this one right here is marker. Again, the red is marker in this corner. Here. I'm backwards. There we go. Red. And then this right here is crayon. So even if you just have crayons, you can still do the colors that you might want for your fire. Um, I have pastels in my house, um, so that would make a really cool fire, so I colored those. And this down here on this side, actually, yeah, there we go, on this side is colored pencil. So you can do it with colored pencil as well. Um, maybe you have watercolors, or maybe some of you um, have other types of finger paints or whatever. Like maybe your sibling is in kindergarten and they have to have those supplies. You can use basic supplies for this. So what do I do next? Well, since I have these scraps, I would kind of just take, see I have even kindergartner scissors here. Just take these, okay, little pieces of um, these scraps, these colors that I did, all that kind of stuff. And what you do is you just kind of, you basically cut these into smaller pieces. Uh, and they, for mosaics, usually their pieces were really small. Since you're just starting out, it's okay if you do bigger pieces. So maybe I will do pieces that are, instead of like tiny, tiny circles or tiny, tiny squares, pieces that are more like this size, okay? Um, um, maybe I'll do some pieces that are cut out of this. So let's see. And you might just, you know, cut big pieces and then chop them into littler ones, whatever you want. Okay. Okay, so I have this piece and this piece and this piece, and they're all cut from different things. Let's go ahead and cut something from. Uh, the magazine, because, or um, the newspaper rather, because there's really, there's a cool picture of a rose here, so if I wanted to use red in my fire, that rose would be really good for it. So again, you might just have to search it out, and you want to ask your parents, is it okay if I use this? But you don't want to upset them. There's my little rose. And I'm gonna cut this into smaller pieces probably. Um, and then I also saw somewhere in here, uh, here's an, actually a picture of skin, which I know you think, well, that's not fire color. But if you mix it in with other colors, that could work too. Um, so maybe it will, maybe it won't. I'll cut it out just in case. I also like that this picture has, um, this cool flower with it because that could look cool in my flames because it's kind of like pokey. So if I just cut that out, it kind of looks pokey actually. It's kind of neat. I think I will put it in my fire like so. Just cutting. Not real interesting, I know. Okay. You can skip forward. See? Kind of a neat little color and I think that'll go well with my other colors. Uh, and then there's also in here um, this sunset picture and I'll cut it out and I'll show it to you. It's about for Gamble, just a local newspaper. Um, so there's this like sunset that has some good um, colors in it because it has the color of the sun and um, you know, other really cool colors that might work in a mosaic. So I'm gonna cut that out too. And with mosaics, um, what it was meant to do was to show a picture that from far away would be easy to recognize. Um, 
So the picture wouldn't necessarily have the exact colors that you're looking for, but if you put them all close together, they form a person or they form a flower or they form a, a pattern. Uh, and so it wasn't necessarily super important that the, the, that the pieces all be the same color exactly. So you can be kind of creative with that. For instance, for my log, I might use the sofa color. I know for you, it kind of looks orange um, and it is sort of an orangey color, uh, but there's other browns in this thing that would work really well. And again, I could probably color um, with crayons or markers. Um, I could color a piece of paper in different browns. Here's my sofa and uh, paste those together uh, as little squares as well. And then this side also has a brown sofa. I guess brown sofas are really in right now, but uh, I could use that brown as well. And there's a lot of brown in this little bag that the other side's got red checkers on it. There's a lot of brown on this side too. So mosaics I think look coolest when there's a lot of different colors, but of course it's up to you. You might find that you just want to use a few different things that you cut out and that is perfectly fine as well. Um, I just try to cut out some of like this one has a pillow in it. I don't want that pillow in my browns. So I cut around it and get mostly browns and that's going to go in my log. So you might be thinking like, okay, we understand how to cut out paper. We understand how to do that. Uh, how do we make that look like a picture? Well, that's the part that's more artistic. And that's the part that took them, I think, the most amount of time. Of course, getting the stones or the tiles or um, being, the things they needed for that would be difficult. But I think the hardest part is putting it together and making it look like a picture that's recognizable. Now, when you look at it really close, it might just look like little squares. But the idea is when you look at it far away, so I encourage you to do this if you make them, put it up a little further and see does that look the way that I want it to look? And if not, you can change it around a bit. You'll probably need glue. Tape would work, but you would want to put it on the back. So just a cheap little dollar store uh, glue would work. You know, you don't have to have your parents spend a whole bunch. And I bet, I bet the school might have supplies. We could ask about that anyway. Maybe they will. I'm going to show you just, um, real quick how some of these little pieces pasted together can start forming a picture, okay? So all I'm doing right now is putting browns together. Different colors of browns that um, are going to be my log, okay? So this is starting my log on this side here. And um, I'm going to just find as many little squares of brown that I can from both the magazines and the newspapers that I have located and even my recycle bin and just start putting them together in the shape, over the shape that I've kind of already cut out. So you remember, or drew out, you remember I drew out the shape beforehand just to kind of get an idea of how I wanted it to look. And that's so that it actually, um, that's so I actually have a guide so it's not like just all over the place because we don't, I want it to look a very specific, you know, I want it to look like a log from far away. So as I go, here's just some of them, I will make this more, um, I guess it'll be longer. I'll make it longer. So as I go, um, but let's say I want to start doing some of the fire too and I've cut out different pieces for fire okay Miss Hannah's not going to make you watch me do the entire thing because I just want you to get an idea how to do it mine might not have even end up being finished by the time we're done but yours might be able to be and then you can show them to us and I really like seeing people's art so I hope you do them because otherwise how boring is that I don't get to see anybody's art we use this picture of the sunset and that's going to be in my fire just because I think it kind of has I think the sunset always has such pretty colors and a lot of times um, they're very fiery looking colors so all right you're going to get to see it soon. I'm just pasting right now, which I realize is probably pretty boring to you guys. Um, and then I have 
these, this is just my pastels that I mixed. So I mixed um, yellow and orange pastels together. And if you don't have pastels, most people don't even have pastels. I think that's just something Miss Hannah likes. But um, if you don't have pastels, no big deal. Crayons mix really well together. Like you can go yellow and then color over top of the yellow with orange. Crayons are really easy to use in that way. Okay. Um, excuse me. I'm going to do this one, which is a uh, crayon. Show you how that looks on there. And then I'll point this out when I show it to you, um, like what I would continue to do. This hand is probably, I mean, I might finish it and maybe I'll show it to you guys when it's done if you guys want to see that. Mostly I'm just trying to help you figure out, and I'm going to cut this one. It's okay if you don't like where how it's being placed. If you cut it as you go, that's fine. They would have shaped theirs as they too. I'm probably not going to finish it unless you guys really want to see it. I just just give you an example of what to do. I'm going to use this for some of my fire too, just because it has reds in it and I think that it could get across the idea of fire. So I'm going to use it and we'll see how it does. I might end up not liking it and that's okay. I can always take something off if I don't like it. See how it's going so far. Okay, so here up here would be my fire. Down here is where I'm gonna finish putting browns and that's gonna be my log, okay? Um, and I'm gonna need more browns for that, so I'm probably gonna have to scavenge some more. Um, let's see, I had one other piece that I colored. Oh yeah, for highlighters, some of you have highlighters, right? Um, so there's definitely, you know, in fires, there's definitely yellows, so highlighter. Super vibrant, super cool look to it. Um, and there's different colors of highlighters. So maybe if you bought a pack of highlighters, you can use different colors of highlighter for your picture. That's a, a orange highlighter. Uh, again, these are just little office supplies that I have laying around. Uh, crayon, let's try crayon. Okay. And the crayons are cool because they give kind of a texture when you cut them out. So I'm going to show you this. Maybe you can see what I'm talking about. So here's the crayon. It's got this kind of neat little texture to it because that's, you know, not usually all the way full. And then this to color next to it. I just think those look really neat together. Um, so I'll use that too for my fire. My fire is going to make up like, so I'm doing a campfire. My fire is going to make up most of the picture. Um, some of the mosaic is going to be brown and then so if I wanted it to be a campfire at night then I'd also have to find blacks and possibly even like a night sky from a newspaper or a magazine. I could cut out pieces from that. So you just got to be a little bit creative um, and go with the flow and be okay with things not looking perfect which I know is kind of frustrating for those of you who are perfectionists, you want things to look perfect. Um, what I'm finding out is you wanna do the back pieces first. So for instance, with mine, I had this orange piece, go over this orange piece here. It was down first. I should have put the other one uh, behind it on this side that one down first. So anything that's going to be overlapped, you kind of want to put down first. So probably you want to start with your background first and then move to um, the picture you're making. Miss Hannah did not start with more background first, so I'm going to do more cutting than you will. But if you were to, so you're going to do a black background, if you were to cut out pieces like this, and do the black background first and then put the fire over it, it would be a lot less cutting. So that's probably what Miss Hannah is going to have to do um, if I wanted to finish this. But mostly I just wanted to give you an idea of how you can make a mosaic even if you don't have a lot of stuff and how it's kind of even maybe a little bit more fun if you have to go looking around for things. Um, if you have people you know who have things that you could use like magazines, make sure you ask like I said. But I think sometimes the searching for this stuff is part of the fun uh, because then you end up with sort of more variety rather than just having kind of the same color brown or the 
same color blue. It looks prettier if you have more variety, in my opinion. I don't know if it, any of you, probably not, have ever seen Charlie and Lola, the, the cartoon um, where her stuff like looks like different colors of paper and stuff. Her cartoon with Charlie and Lola looks like she cut out pieces of fabric and stuff like that and created her characters from those. Um, and she had sort of that idea of mosaic when she did that. Um, but like you'll see some in your art book, you'll see some really cool examples of mosaics and you'll see a lot of them are done with squares. So you can try that, just cut out a whole bunch of squares. I didn't, I didn't cut just squares. I cut out a whole bunch of shapes, but traditional mosaics would have been probably mostly squares, but I don't know. I think you can do it non-traditionally as well, especially if you're just scavenging for papers, which would not have been as prevalent when they did a lot of mosaics. They wouldn't have had a lot of paper. Uh, so newer mosaics, you can use paper and those cut easier. Whereas stones, you have to shape pretty carefully. Um, so I hope that you have fun. I hope you try it out because I think it's fun. Like I said, I got my fire going here. I'm going to make my log here. I'm going to do black in the background. Probably you don't even have to fill the whole page with mosaic. You can do a certain part of it being your mosaic and then maybe just um, color the rest. That would probably be fine too. Be creative. You don't have to create a mosaic exactly like they do in the art because the great thing about it as an artist, you get to be, um, do things your way and make it fun. So you don't have to do it the way I did it. It will turn out cool just because um, you tried it out. So I hope you have fun and I hope you try it.